If you could, uh, could you please, for people that don't know, properly introduce yourself, let us know where about in the world you are, and plug anything you'd like to plug. Anything? Anything. Anything. Oh, boy. You got All the right. OnlyFans, bro? Let us know. <laughs> I don't, but uh, I am Ricky. I'm from, uh, I'm the guitar player and, and uh, backup vocalist of Ice on Kills. Uh, I sing for a band called Hawk, and I'm a music producer uh, based out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm a songwriter. Um, and... Uh, God, if I could plug something right now. Right, is anybody pl- uh, anti, uh, there's a subreddit called Anti-Work where everybody is just coaching one another uh, through how to fuck over their minimum wage employer the most. And I love it. <laughs> and, they're go. Screen, and they're posting screen caps of their arguments over text with their boss where they tell them to fuck off and everything. Anti-Work oh, on Reddit. That is such it. a random plug, but I love it. I yeah. love it. So you I guys, love it. You guys are you guys are in Canada right now. How how is a uh, how's just tour got, been? Just got in. I mean, most of the shows have sold out. I don't know how to conceptualize it on it on any level. I'm in my 30s, and I, I'm used to things failing. So, well, mm. just trying to unpack it. Big mood. How we'll do get you... around to feeling good about it in a couple of years? So we obviously can't play Ice Nine for copyright reasons, but we we tested it the other day, and we can play Hawks. We want we want to play a couple Hawks songs if possible. But sure, uh, go for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. One of my it's possible. Nobody's one of my uh, initial you, one of my initial questions is how do you balance it all with with Ice Nine and all the production and and Hawk and Mouth Data? Speaking of that, is anything going on with Mouth Data? Mouth Data has not been active for a little bit, but I but we have talked about it um, for sure. You know, uh, it's, hold up. Uh, Option Command B. I'm bouncing. So uh, let me explain how I'm, I'm balancing it right now. I'm on my laptop right now, and I am uh, one overture, no drums, bounce. Uh, and let's go. There you, there you go. <laughs> That's how it's getting done. Cool. Uh, I got a laptop with me, and I got 24 hours in the day, and I can work. But um, to to be honest with you, it's it's a challenge, and it's something I am always always having to get better at. My mentality is just. Um, I don't, I just don't stop working. And, uh, and so, you know, when I'm on tour with ice nine kills, that's my gig. And that's the most important thing that that's the most important gig that, uh, I have to focus on. I wake up, I rehearse, I, I see my instructor once a week generally. And, uh, and I, um, I also talk to my other vocal instructor over text all the time, Melissa cross. And I, um, when I get an hour or two to work on my production stuff, I work on it. If I get time to work on Hawk stuff, I work on it. When I'm home, I'm generally a producer, and we have to set time aside for Hawk activities. So I know uh, from the 17th of December to the 21st, we have Hawk stuff to do. And then we also are going to be playing as our old band, This of the Apocalypse. So I have to get all that stuff together. So it's just a matter of keeping a schedule, you know, deciding – when we need to make more money and deciding when we can take a break and focus on fun stuff like Hawk. And it is a, uh, it's a learning process. You're just, you're always trying to find a way to get better at it. It's gotta be a completely different live experience too. Like being an I sign and, and probably the thousands you guys play for now. Is it, mm-hmm. is it, what's it like being able to play the smaller sh- different kind of experience it, it, there, there's uh you know there's uh, it's good to still um get an idea of what the the social dynamics are like and the differences between them when you're in the band that's headlining a sold out show at the palladium or the fucking paramount in long island or the starland ballroom in jersey you know we're kind of at that level where we're headlining these places and then hawk goes out on the road and we're not headlining and we're not selling is out and you this the social the social dynamics are different and it's good to experience both and kind of meet in the middle and 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 just get a good idea of 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 where you're at you know and uh i I love it it makes sense uh we have we have a fan question for you if that's okay sure what was the process and preparation behind the silver the silver scream and, or the Silver Stream, excuse me. And can you tell us if Spencer is the silence? I can't tell you that because I don't even know. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. It just seems to usually leave the rest of the band, like uh, Dan, Joe, and Patrick. Like, does it leave you guys out of the loop for a lot of the stuff? And just was like, this is what we're doing? He doesn't leave us out of the loop. That's for sure. What he does, though, is he's he is the brains behind that band. That band is an extension of his nonstop work ethic of he is always, always, all of the marketing, all of the right down to the language used in the marketing, the little blurbs, the coming this summer, you know, all that stuff. That is him sitting with his phone, sitting on his laptop. He's always thinking of things. So I don't speak on behalf of, of whatever Spencer's plans are because he's throwing a lot of ideas at us and, you know, seeing what we think about them. And at the end of the day, though, they're his. And we and he's receptive to, for feedback and, and he loves to bounce ideas off of people. He's one of the most fun people to write music with because he knows exactly what he wants it to sound like. And the moment somebody gives him an idea that he thinks is better, he'll be like, oh, actually, that's better. All right, let's do that. And, cool. and and he's 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 great. Um, but when it comes down to like the the storyline and and what he's trying to do, I think that's always a work in progress for him, which I think is actually brilliant because he's told me a few different versions of what he's trying to do. And then and and you have you have uh, ideas and then ideas start meeting reality once you start thinking about budget, film locations, time, what can we do? And and that's something that there's there's something that's really cool about Ice Nine Kills um, that that I admire so much, and that is the fact that the band is always 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 um, finding a way to pull off cool and unique stuff on really uh, in, in a very DIY way. Even when we have like these big we have like big film companies we work with now and everything, but there's still so funeral derangements like one of the highest looking budget videos i've ever i've ever seen that child that child's coffin they were like driving around looking everywhere they had to buy a child's coffin it's sitting in joe's <laughs> parents garage oh no no it's at joe's house right now and, it, and he's got like music equipment on the inside of it if you go into any of our houses you see video like shit from the videos everywhere a lot of it like people in the band or in our crew have built themselves the whole entire thing is is a mix of of um how do you say it just like can do and um also like a lot of uh, I, like, I like scary props and stuff is that what you mean yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even like the live show and stuff like that. Chevy's always having to make stuff for it, and you know, and Spencer's always bouncing ideas off of all of us. And can we make this happen? And um, sometimes we can't. So, so you know, compromises have to be made because it's like, well, we can't do that. It's like, well, what if we did this instead? And um, so I, I, I've been learning a lot um, from working with Spencer, and 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 I could honestly talk about the guy for hours. He is just absolutely on a whole other level of, of being a visionary and all that. Oh, you locked into him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Burns, go ahead and ask him something. And then we'll play, uh, we'll play a Hawk song right after this. Um, well, you, he, you mentioned earlier, is this or the apocalypse? Is that a separate band from Hawk? Cause I thought I Hawk. read it as this or the apocalypse had to re rename to Hawk. And I was wondering why we didn't have to. Mm, okay. But, uh, you know, this or the apocalypse, um, we well, were on like four different record labels or something like that. You know, at a certain point when you're when you're going around, and you're talking to management, record labels, and stuff like that. Like, you know, people are just like, okay, I'm not going to be number five that loses money on this fucking name. And okay. you know, and, and at, at, at a certain point, the band member, you know, we had we had um, two OGs were on their way out the door, and it was like, I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to keep teaching people how to play this stuff that's almost physically impossible for most musicians. Okay. To, to, you know what I mean? There, there was like a certain amount of respect for what it was, and it was like, that's... guys, let's, 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 um, let's rebrand this. So you, and, so that's its own entity, entity then. So you would like play a completely different show compared to Hawk if it, you were playing this or the Apocalypse. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I like that. Yeah. All right. Let's pull up Spotify. Let's not actually. Oh, let's do go. the video for Counter Ops, which is my favorite of uh of the Hawk oh, Jams. My... Oh man, I, I yeah that 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 was uh, that was the COVID music video that we did uh, with David Brodsky. Well, it's, it came out awesome. The song's awesome. Incredible human being. Let's go ahead and jam it. Hawk with counter ops. <laughs> 
by from, from tracking or when I had this, I tracked that verse um, the day before I left for an Ice Nine Kills tour, and we had to get the song done. And my voice was beyond cooked, and we were listening to it, and it was like, fuck it, that's kind of cool. It's dude. Have you ever heard of the band Jinx out of New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My manager manages them. Really? It has it has like a Jinx, Jinx influence on it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a fan of a lot of underground hip hop. So I didn't mean to interrupt my own song. I thought I didn't know if I was supposed to do commentary. No, that's cool. What is? Oh uh, yeah, you are. What? Please. <laughs> Did you ever play the that? game Counter Ops? No? And are you a gamer? Yeah. Oh, I. You know, I, I actually don't really like. Uh, I don't like first person shooters that much. I, I can, I can play them, and sometimes, sometimes I do get sucked into one, but. I found myself liking the ones where I didn't have to just rack up kills. Um, I like the ones where I can do other shit to, to play the game. Like, those are fun to me. Like, like role-playing games where you can kind of go wherever you want at any time? No, what's the one where you can go do missions and you can, like, rob... Like, you can just, like, loot Grand places. Theft. I was no, thinking of Far Cry or No, something. no, it was, it, it was... It's a first-person shooter. It's one of the... It's, like... Call of Duty. It was one of them, but they made a mass player game mode where you could you didn't have to just kill people. You could also like perform these missions. And so me and Adam would play it, and we wouldn't even get in firefights with anybody. We would just be like sneaking in and stealing. Oh, stuff. Uh, you probably thinking like Warzone or something. That's what it's yeah, about. Yeah, I think it was Warzone. I like that. Let's one. go! I knew it. That one yeah, is cool. But... <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, I cut off my own self. I like both bands, man. Well, even Mount Data too. So I like all three bands, but I'm. I kind of just discovered Hawk because of this interview, and I'm leaning. leaning. Yeah, I am. I really like it a lot. There's so many bangers, yeah, dude. I'm I'm going home. We we got videos to shoot for some new stuff. It doesn't doesn't even sound remotely Excellent. like that stuff. That is that is awesome. Dude. That's great news. We did, hey. Hawk's like my creative thing now. I get to do whatever I feel like. It's great. From the, How was the transition from performing as like a co-vocalist with Spencer to like now just running your own thing? Is it like do you have to like kind of hold yourself back so you can perform for both? Do you ever find? You know, I, we've done tours where I played in both bands. Um, I, I uh, every day, like you know, Hawk will open for Ice I Nine Kills, and oh, um, I, I, re I rehearse a lot. I, I just have to take care of my. Stay voice, warmed up, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I warm up like an hour or two a day sometimes, but Sorry. like. Um, you know, it's just a, you, um, you know, I'm old enough now where it's like, this is my gig. I, I got to take it seriously. I don't like, I don't drink, I don't party and, you know, I, I'll have fun if I, if I get a chance, it, but, but it'd, my, be real, it'd be like that though. It's, you know, my top concern is, am I honoring the people that are coming to these fucking shows by actually giving them a good show? Well, you so know, it's like yeah. they, they are the concern and that's something that I, I i god i wish i would have thought about that earlier because you know you are playing in bands and stuff you always think it's about you yeah True. and then people early in their early career tend to be like party animals and not be prepared for the next day like you said blowing out your voice from just doing well, stupid stuff up, yeah you're just you know younger and you show up to shows and you think that it's about like you think every show is a chance to blow up or whatever the fuck you think. Like who? Where are the who girls knows? at, yo? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's yeah. what's some uh, what's some bad tour habits that you have? Ooh. I uh, when I'm on tour, I'm, it, it's a lot of stimulus for me, and when I'm overstimulated, I tend to be pretty distracted and pretty not like to the point where I I, I uh, I'm like. One guitar player is here, Chris. Uh, he had a story where somebody asked, uh, they asked him to compare each of us to like a Disney princess. And he was like, I forget which one I was, but I was the one that was like a space cadet and like always <laughs> off, like in their brain somewhere <laughs> thinking about other things. But nice. I'm, I'm on my laptop. I'm working on production stuff. I'm doing other stuff all the time. So I can definitely seem like I'm not present. And I wish I could seem more present, but it's just I'm in a different spot every day. I, I, trying to get my bearings all the time it's you it's work hard now and you don't challenge. have to later man you can big chill later that's the goal you know speaking of production uh you actually worked with two really close friends of the show you worked with enox and hidden mm -hmm. figures yes uh what was it like working with hidden figures regarding that i heard they spent a month building the set for that video with all the tvs and stuff behind them yeah dan horhan is a monster uh, he, he was he was the visionary behind that music video and dan's kind of like he's very closely linked to hidden figures uh they're a good band 
I like them. Uh, we we uh, I they they have a third song that I did with them that they're going to be releasing soon. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're supposed to work on more material, but I've been gone. It'll happen. It happen. It'll happen soon. Uh, yeah. Being that you're in a a horror band, if you will, what's a horror movie that scared you when you were growing up? God, I saw Freddy too at my friend's house at a sleepover, and uh, we were he. Man, sleepover it's at Mike's house were the sh. But uh, <laughs> he, had, he had this like big, big, huge basement, and it was like kind of a common space. And he also had um, he had la- like a laser tag set up, so That's we would cool. just. I mean, it was like an up all night environment. And he had these two sisters, and one of them was bad. I remember that we were all always like, "Oh shit, my sister!" Uh, but she, uh, so you know, like in the common area she could be watching something on the tv or we could be watching something on the tv and there'd be a whole other hangout going on in the other part of the basement his family was really cool and i just remember she we were watching uh they turned on freddy too and my my family is real squeamish about anything scary violent you know sexual content anything like that they they were trying to shield me from all that so mike's house we're watching Freddy too scares the shit out of me, and the whole time his sister's listening to Oasis, and so nice. I got like Wonder Wall <laughs> giving me like dramatic memories for the next couple of years. You know what I mean? Uh, and that that one scared the living shit out of me. Uh, it really did. Hell yeah! H- have you guys ever had a chance to meet uh, Robert England? No, I haven't personally. Spencer may have. I know he's met a bunch of he's met a bunch of the greats. That's one of my I must get autographs someday. Um, yeah, I met all the guys from uh, Halloween. Oh, cool! Ooh. I met the whole Halloween gang. Um, I met Candyman. What? Well, Tony. I met, Chris- Tony? I met Christina Ricci. Nice. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember the, Tony Todd. Is that his name from from Candyman? Something like that. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Yeah, a really, really sweet person. He was cool. Hey, if if Hawk could have any feature in the world. And it doesn't matter the size of the artist, like like Madonna or somebody. Who would you want to be a feature? Trent Reznor. Wow, nice. hell yeah! I could see it working too, like with with kind of like a or, or yeah. LP. Who? I'm sorry, say that again. LP E L dash P. He's a rapper. He's one of the, he's half a Run the Jewels. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Or, or, or run the or run the jewels. I mean, man. hell yeah. yeah, take the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. How far in advance does does Ice Nine shoot their music videos before we actually get to see them? It varies. Uh, we've we've actually there was uh, one of them came out uh, very sh- shortly after we filmed it. I remember being like, because we, I think I think that was rainy day. I would be sure. nervous. Oh yeah, because I remember I remember seeing it without the special without the special effects added the the day before the video was to be released. So you were nervous. Far, oh, yeah. Well, because as far as I mean, like, it looked incredible, but it was lacking all of, like, the, the, the like, flare. The, yeah. The, the, the bullet shots and stuff. So it really looked like Nadia was just running around with a gun and things were falling over. And I was, like, looking around the room panicking because I was like, wait, are, is that? And they're like, oh, there'll be, there's going to be some special effects at it, like some. And then when the video came out, it was incredible. And I was they just pulled like, an all nighter. Don't let them lie oh, to like, you. We, we work with, like, the, the, best like it, it, spencer picks like some of the coolest uh, it, it, he he like hand selects literally everybody that works on these things that's cool yeah hell yeah spencer actually you was that you gotta vibe with people first you know yes. you're handing them a part of like your career like they could make it or break it and like you invest a lot into them so it's like cool that you really like figure those people out you know oh yeah absolutely and this had to have been like six or seven years ago, but uh, Spencer was actually my mentor. I used to pay him a fee uh, every month. I think he was on Red Blue at the time, just to like get his advice and stuff. He'll never remember me. Uh, but uh, oh, really? But uh, yeah, it was, he used to mentor one of my bands back in the day. I'd call him just for advice every now and then. So he's he's awesome, man. He's just been a really cool cat for many so years. Spencer knows about hit him, bro. It's no, in his brain somewhere. <laughs> I think it was, this was the rebellion, actually. But, uh, he, he, uh, he actually is a very, very thoughtful person who remembers very small details about things. That's cool. If, if I ever get a chance to talk to him, then I will uh, see if he remembers me. We'll see. Hell yeah, so good, dude. I've got, I've got just a couple more for you. I know you're super, super busy. Um, 
what what's an what's an artist or two? okay cool well, what's a, what's an artist or two that you jam in your personal time that we wouldn't expect man i that new grandson album i love that artist uh Ooh. grandson um new doja cat full length i've been um actually piecing that apart new taylor swift well it's hell yeah it's an it's an old taylor swift album just re-recorded but um the taylor, the taylor's, taylor's version i look at i don't listen to a lot of heavy stuff uh and and that's that's nothing against heavy stuff it's just more of a matter of like i'm a melody guy i want to mm-hmm. i want to pick up pick apart melodies and chords and their relationship and you know I, more so i as you've heard with my work i can i i know my way around producing a heavy band but you know my goal is over time to i'd love to work on on sync pop singles stuff like that you know i want to be able to m- make music that gets heard by a lot of people and and that world for me is is exciting it's fun and it's still it feels new to me you know to pick apart like a new pop artist and write down I, i'm crazy i have a i have a google docs sheet it's like 80 pages long now where i just listen to songs and i just write down all the notes that i'm hearing and the relationship with the chords and when the chord changes what notes happening how how many uh how many syllables are broken into a line how are they broken up like and if you look at it, it looks like nonsense. It looks like absolute chicken scratch. <laughs> in, Yo, in, work don't lie, bro. Listen to his music. You know what you're doing. <laughs> it's like, it don't lie. In, so in the Counter Ops video, you don't have a guitar in hand. Do you Do you play guitar in Hawk when you run around, or just you're full on just front man so you can just just jump off the walls and stuff? Too. Yeah, no, I'm just front man. Cool. Hell yeah. Uh, Lloyd, I, mean, do you... I sometimes end up helping in the studio. Like, you know, oh, so you just woke stuff. up and be like, I'm handsome as fuck. I'm fronting now, bro. I ain't doing no dirty guitar work. I'm just living it. <laughs> well, I got you, bro. I wasn't a guitar player. I was never a guitar player. Spencer just thought I was because here's here's my my thing. Like, I, I run a recording studio, and over time, you eventually you go through a lot of phases uh, when you're learning to be a producer, and there's a phase that most of us hit where, you know, you, you sit there all day trying to get somebody to just play the thing in a way to make it sound the way you want. And eventually they leave the guitar behind and they leave and you go, you know what? I'm gonna get this fucking thing and you use your ears and you keep like picking at different spots and like listening to it. And you're like, oh shit, I need it to sound like this. And you just re-record their shit for them. And you're like, wait, that took me an hour. And I just sat with that dude for like six hours trying to get him to play this song. So I'm I'm finding myself more and more playing like I was playing guitar more often. I, I have a couple on my wall, you know. I, 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 it wasn't like I had never played the instrument before. I, I'd been oh, a guitar player in the past, but let's just say in this or the apocalypse when we'd be writing, if I sat down and grabbed a guitar and be like, "Hey, I got a song idea," the the vibe wasn't, "Hey, let's really hear him out on this." You know what I mean? Like I wasn't. It wasn't my instrument. Um, no, I, but I, I have a understanding of it. So when me and songs for the screen, he came to me for some writing, and I'll grab, I do my thing, you know, I grab the guitar, I'll be like, okay, um, I think maybe this chord to here. And I remember he was just like, I didn't know you could play guitar, and I was like, I can't. But you know, you're like, you're playing, like, I, I, like I got a little bit better than I, I thought I was, and he called me on four days' notice for the gig saying we need somebody it's an emergency and i wanted to get out of town so i said why not okay and then i was like what do we do if i can't play it and they're like i don't know we'll figure it out and so i i did not <laughs> say, oh you gonna play it <laughs> yeah yeah i was like oh, trust me. I, was, I was in a spot of life i was like what 29 something like that i was in a spot where i was like i am getting out of lancaster <laughs> i'm like and i did not i sat there i watched those videos jd sent and I played at half speed, and I just was like, "Fingers, you are gonna do this <laughs> shit." And I flew out to Sacramento. Today. I plugged the fucking thing in, and this band is looking at me like, "What is going to happen?" And I got a big old smile on my face because I haven't played a show in like five years. And here we are. Here, are, here we are, and here we are. It's Records funny. Track. It's funny that this interluded to what was gonna be my next question. Uh, in a couple of different I sign fan groups i asked if anyone had any questions the most common question i got is can we officially say that you're a permanent member now i i think 
I guess I'm in the fucking photos. I'm in the videos. I don't, what's what you... the album credits? Say, I don't know bro? who who justifies yeah, determines that, love. but the, for no, some I, reason I, that was like I, an I, overwhelming I, question that yeah. I kept seeing was like, can you ask him if he's now permanently in it? Which I think pleases people that you are. But uh, I'm an Anki boy. Cool. I'll I'm take an Anki boy. I don't, I don't know what my I don't necessarily know what my uh, what my my um, you know, in terms of like military designations, I don't know what my my <laughs> badge would be. He follows but, the melodies and where they take him. Yeah, I, I I just you know, um, I think a lot of people do know like the the headline when I talk to people is like, how do you do all this shit? And the thing about it is, it's like, well, it, you know, it, it's clearly you know for the past what for three four five months uh it's been mostly ice nine because we have a record release cycle but those you know the, I, when that's over i'm not gonna like just sit around in my house and not do anything you know max get yeah. right get right back to work i don't do naps yo how was working with chris adler chris adler is a great guy he's fun that's he, um, that's like legendary status yeah it was weird he like show like he showed up to a show we played for maybe seven people and then afterwards somebody come somebody from a band that we had toured with comes up to me and they're like wide-eyed and they're like dude chris adler was just in here watching you and I'm like hey, who and he's like chris adler the drummer lamb of god i'm like oh that's funny he's probably just drunk and had no idea and then he got my drummer wasted and he was like i want to work on an album with you and at the time i don't even know what that meant wow. you know what i mean like we talking about it. he's like is he uh, he produces records and they're like yeah i guess he's he's getting into it I'm like, oh, all right that's awesome and then, we, and then we go for a meeting with him he connects us with a record label and he wow. it, it was crazy crazy timing yeah you're, you're eating, i'm de eating dinners with people they're lying to me it's it's <laughs> great that's awesome it's great I do want to play one Mount Data song, um, yeah, yeah, just because it's it. such a completely different vibe than than all the other stuff, uh, but it's still just as cool. Oh, oh man, it's been a while. Making sure yeah. I hit the subscribe button. You really get the like Trent Reznor influence on this song too, like why that would fit perfectly on a project with you. It has those like those glitches and those stutters and stuff. Hey Ricky, while on tour, I'll say Trent Reznor. I say Zach Della Roach. I want to see him with I... you. Yeah. You know, these are uh, those uh, those are the types of musicians I aspired to be like, you know, it's um, I always, uh, you know, kind of struggled to find my place in this stuff, because if we're being honest with one another, I do not have a natural inclination for any of this shit. You hear me go like that's not raw skill. That's just me making shit up and trying to figure it out. And uh, and, you know, the Ice Nine gig has change things dramatically because in order to rise to it like i've had to learn a great deal about music and about it this is a like it is a musical band you like we have harmony sheets we have we address you know like what parts people are doing and it's just like hey during this part you're going to sing a low third during the chorus of this line i'm going to need you to take the high fifth and you you know we and people need to know what that that means in the band for for things to be able to work at the at the, at the pace that the band needs it to happen i showed up and i was like a infant in comparison to these people they're they're talking about they're talking about like chords in a way i'd never i never even heard these terms you know what i mean we're, we're just uh, you know be like can you um can you please like suspend that harmony during this part and and i gotta like look around oh. the room and then everybody realizes i don't know I don't can know i google this about. real quick <laughs> yeah and um so you know I, I i made it uh from the from the moment and, and 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 but as i started really dumping myself into it it starts reflecting on you know my production career and i'm you know slowly able to start getting my rates up to a point where it's like yeah, you know get a hot tub <laughs> you know it's yeah, like, like they're really patient with you too and that's like that's a big deal as oh, well yeah. dude I, I I I don't get it. I don't understand why they, they just liked you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was like they're I, grooming you, know, you. They figured it out. What we 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 had a really good relationship right off the bat, and and I, I can never thank those guys enough for like investing in me. You know, that's kind of how I felt like. Uh, I, that's why I felt like was happening. Where I think they were just kind of like, "Hey, Scrappy, you'll figure it out." What's what's the hardest song for you to perform in the set, vocally and on guitar? 
Well, all right. So if we're talking about difficult, those Hawk songs, like, I, 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 I would, I would even, it's arguable if I could even say I'm like performing them live because it, they're tough. But yo, um, they're nasty, like guitar riffs in that. That's yeah, nasty. Yeah, it carries. That that's all Jack. He's got to worry about that with Hawk. I ain't even starting. Uh, <laughs> I ain't even starting to worry about that shit. But um, with uh, Ice Nine Kills, you know, um, I, I, people ask this question, and the thing about it is, we play these songs so goddamn much that they're just they all they all feel like they're in equal difficulty. But um, I would say when I first joined, we we're playing this one song called "The Plot Sickens." off of uh every trick in the book mm -hmm. and it was based on that um the book about the flight crash in the andes when everybody had to eat each other you know mm -hmm. true story I, and i read that book when i was young so actually i really related to that song uh the other thing i, I read it when i was weird young too so that kind of petty wise that dude that book was fucking Durant. There's a lot of shit they skip out in the movies for good reason yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah they're not going to show kids gang banging in a sewer <laughs> but but also these kids are doing like psychedelics and they find a dinosaur and the dinosaur somehow has something to do with the clown and the clown is. Oh, what about how the clown's scared of the space turtle, bro? The God yeah. turtle that Stephen King has. I should if you look you. at it, you go insane because it's unimaginably. Difficult. I've never read the books. This is the first I'm, the first I'm hearing of all There's of this. a lot of shit. And I tell yeah, people and they are like very shy. Like, You're making that up. Like, no, nope, you'd be yeah, surprised. Well, you they cut to... their hands and bond. <laughs> the, the, the book does, you know, cover the territory of underage sewer gangbangs. Um, but uh, it goes what there. the uh, so they were clever in the movie. They just did the whole blood brother pack thing. The, the yeah, safe. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, um, or it's like you know we're, we're all running a train on Wendy, and this you know solidifies us. And you know Stephen <laughs> King's got to think of some. Stephen King's got to think of some bullshit reason why he did it years later because now that it's not, you know, I was trying to be spicy. Now it's not topical, and he's like, "Oh, I was trying to link the adult world and the child world in a creative, creative way," and you know, and it's just like, no, you're you're doing coke in a hotel room, dude. Chill. Oof. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true. But anyway, uh, the <laughs> I can only assume. After reading that book at nine, I, that's that was my assumption that I was making. I'm like, you know, this guy. This guy is pretty yacked up, uh, but the uh, so anyway, back to the song. So plot sickens, I, you know, some of the rhythms on guitar and vocals, trying to do both those things at the same time. Is insane. Oh, we're so losing him, Captain. Uh oh, am I back? Yeah, you're good. Uh, you're back. You're good. We go. We've got him back. So some of the some of the rhythmic stuff on guitar and the vocals are two completely different entities so what i would have to do is i would have to sit there and pretend that it's one instrument so it'd be like you know hand motion syllable syllable hand motion then both together on a thing and i would just sit there in the van and just like over and over and the plot sickens that song was probably the most challenging for one for me to get down and be able to fulfill my duty as playing as performing as a guitar player and a vocalist cool hell yeah What's your favorite type of skit? What's your favorite color skittle? Red. Nice. Okay. Hey, we have another mm. fan question though, and the question is, it's a two-part question. Is Stark with you, and how many Stark hairs are on your black socks right now? Uh, so Starks with an S. I don't know. It's Stark. Just, sorry. Just that one. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, he's not here to get offended. No, he's uh, <laughs> he is. Is that home with Grandma and Grandpa? No, uh, they. Aww. I love having him. He's he's a perfect animal. Because you cannot you cannot get a more easy to deal with dog on this planet than Starks. He'll he'll go he'll go he hates the rain, so he can go like a full two days without using the bathroom if it means it'll keep him out of the rain. <laughs> like he's that, sense, easy, going out there that easy to deal with. Uh but we what were you asking how many Starks hairs? Somebody somebody asked how many Stark hairs are on your side. Oh my god, inside info we don't, man. <laughs> I'm wearing some fresh laundry, so I saw, uh, I let's saw go. zero, but I could only assume that there are a few. Sorry guys, he's fresh fitted everywhere. right now. Yeah. So you so you, earlier you said you guys were uh when the tour's over, you got some new videos to shoot for Hawk. When what can we possibly expect uh the release date on any of that stuff? I'm hoping early next year, but it really just depends on me and Adam and how quickly we can get everything done. I'm still finalizing the mixes and 
Come on, dude. Really yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I knew that would get you. You know how much shit I got going on. Come on, man. We we and then, don't care. and then I gotta make decisions. Ugh. Yeah, we don't care. We just want the music. Hello. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, Ricky, we appreciate you joining us, brother. Uh, enjoy the well, rest. We ha- do we have to let him go, bro? I kind of like him. We do. We, we have we have uh, we many Chris other Robert. jams to uh, to get to, unfortunately. Oh. oh, I think I'm going to try to find some food. There you go. All right. You know, you can go eat, bro. We'll, we'll release you out of your box. Did I miss a question? I think, I think we so. got them all. I think we got them all. all. Right. I did so have wait, a question. What the, what, well, I had some, but but what was that? Let's go. No, no, ask us whatever you got. So what's it, what, what's this whole pod, what's your whole mo with this podcast? Is it like smoke session podcast. So it's Ooh. called it's called local band smoke out. I started about seven years ago, and it's primarily a we play uh, artists of any genre from anywhere in the entire world if they're smaller time bands. But uh, we mm-hmm. like to every now and then have a bigger time artist just to just to chat and to yeah. sometimes get advice, blah, blah, blah. But uh, we primarily focus on plugging and pushing the little guy that's still in the garage, but has badass material that just needs some that's ears. Cool. So that's cool. That's kind of what we and do. I was a working artist that loved what he did and just always stuck around. And then I begged him to let me hang out with him all the time so I can help artists do other stuff too. And we all just chill and hang out with each other. Well, I, you know, I'd say you never, my goal is to never stop feeling like the little guy. It's the, comfortable place for me so even you know even when we're Keep starting new like, projects and having to start it over you know well it's like even when you're playing for a couple thousand people my mentality is sort of like what the fuck are they doing here <laughs> you know? the they got nothing better to do they're gonna watch me all right yeah. hey do you know do you know a guy named wes good yeah. Wes, he's in the chat right now saying that he uh used to live in your basement for a while i was uh, uh, wait it Wes says Good, he spent a lot of time in my basement. Wes, when did you live there? I lived in this man. Really I think that's know. his way of saying that he was there all the time. Well, oh, oh yeah, no, he was just there a lot. I was working out of his uh, studio in 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 his. Uh, at, at, he he's got like this farm in Manheim, Pennsylvania. is gorgeous. Hell yeah, and I didn't so, know that. He's yeah. got, we, me and him spent a lot of time together. He's in a band. Uh, he's a band called Dead Wolf now. Um, before they were called From Under the Willow, or like a, that's Dead Wolf is like the new band that he's doing. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a very talented guy. Yeah, we've jammed Dead Wolf a bunch of times. They're awesome. Um, yeah. Well, dude, go enjoy your go enjoy your dinner. Yo, how does someone? How does uh? Who do people have to reach out to to get you on music? Good question. Like, do you do features like uh, other artists or anything? Or yeah, doing that? yeah. I mean. I, 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 I'm a, I'm pretty easy to hit up on Instagram. I mean, like, I will admit, uh, over the you're past, busy with motherfucker. Well, over the past few months of Ice Nine Kills becoming what Ice Nine Kills is becoming, I, I finally I was like, guys, because my whole thing is like, I get back to everybody. I try to be that guy, and I was like, guys. I officially can't fucking do it anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> like sometimes there's like 40 message requests in a day, and it's that's just where like, management comes in. <laughs> these people are getting ignored, and it's just Aww. simply a matter of self care. Mm, yeah. thank, thank you for not yeah. ignoring this message. We appreciate it. Well, yeah, thank you. I generally like try to get a because you can see the first sentence. So if something looks important, you know what I mean, or it looks like something that's gonna make me money, I try to open it up. <laughs> um, I Yo, stay you're off. Cute. Of- you want to make money? I stay off of Facebook, but Happy. every now and then somebody will be like, Hey man, but you know, I, how much would it be? And I'll be like, I'll open up Facebook for money. I'll tell you that much but hey, any, Let's go for anything else. Fuck that. The, the stuff that Facebook and I, I understand Facebook owns Instagram, but like, go look at the, spend a day, look through the comments of a band's thing on Instagram and look through the comments on Facebook. See how drastically different people's outlooks are. Facebook literally stood in front of the U.S. government and apologized because they were running experiments to see how depressed they could make people. Because they found out the more depressed people are, the more they use Facebook. So I won't open it up. I got all the birthday messages. I didn't see a single one of them. I don't <laughs> I, 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 look, I was like, you know what? I'm in my 30s and... Just I'm call me. This, Just call me at I'm, this point. I'm Bro, ending stop this lying. toxic He's like 25, dude. Stop chilling. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's. I'm, I'm still slipping through the cracks with this shit. Let's my go. dad, doubt man, my dad. 
No, very good beard growth, man. You lucky, you blessed. One of the blessed beards. <laughs> Thank you. I need to hear shit like that like every twenty I got minutes you. or else I thought. BG can't grow ah. beard, so I can't vibe with him on the beard games. So I don't I, I don't grow any hair right here. I don't so, know why. It's okay, man. It's annoying. Nah, I, 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 can, I can't make mine doesn't get full. I tried, I tried to get I was like, you know, hoping to be one of those guys in the meme, you know, it's just like you know, like, do like this. I, I grow mine out and it just keeps getting po- it somehow just keeps getting pointier and greasier. Oh, you get the jar <laughs> bro? Just grow that yeah. out. I just I, I yeah, it's like it's it's not a cool look. So I just keep it keep it short. Kyle. Okay. I think that's all we got for you, dude. All right, good. We appreciate it, sir. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you day. Uh, st- stay safe on tour. Aww. Enjoy dinner and uh Thanks. Hopefully we can do this again way down the road uh in the future. Take care. Cheers, brother. Hell yeah. Give me a hell Ricky yeah. of Hawk, Mouth Data, Einstein Kills. Please go look up all of those bands if you're not familiar with them. What an awesome dude, man.